anywhere, but it didn't. It happened right here in my little neighborhood in Hoboken, New Jersey. It was around Thanksgiving time, and we were in the middle of a big emergency. Little did we know it was only the start of an even bigger emergency. Nor are they new to our uh, mayor, Bagley, who is, as you well know by now, once again a candidate in our uh, upcoming election. Hey, uh, Helen, the mayor is here this is. evening in our WHNJ uh, newsroom, and it, it is so nice to see you again, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, well, thank you very much for having me on your lovely show, Cindy. Yeah. In two what short is weeks, it? people all over this fair land Another will be campaign down speech? at their tables to pay That's homage to message. our forefathers who forged this great land of ours with courage, spirit, and determination. Yes. We celebrate this great holiday in the same tradition as those settlers of old with tables brimming with fruits and vegetables. And the turkeys, of course. Well, now, that's sad to say, Cindy, is the point of my message. Due to the truckers refusing to pay our city transit tax, Hoboken may not get any more turkeys this year. I am willing to sit down with the truckers and negotiate, even if it takes from now until Thanksgiving Day, so that every family in this lovely city of Hoboken will have a turkey. Furthermore... You shush me for this? Hi, Mama. Hi, Papa. Shh. I was watching the mayor on TV. Your Honor, we were talking about a turkey on every table. Yes, and there shall be, Cindy. Just, just bear with me. Hey, Arthur. What is it? This is for tomorrow morning. Pick up a turkey at O'Brien's. Oh, Carl, how can I fit a turkey in the icebox for two weeks? I'm not taking any chances of not getting a turkey this year. Thanks, Carl. Tomorrow for sure. And Arthur, no mistakes. Papa, why don't we just have something else? Maybe... At Thanksgiving, is turkey, Arthur. When your grandparents were young and still in Poland, and they told them to eat turkey, they had to eat turkey. Now, here in America, we have a choice. And the choice is turkey. With a light heart and a pocket made heavy with $20, my neighbor, Arthur Bobowitz, started off on his adventure. Hey, George? Benny? Do you want to come to the butcher with me? Can't you see we're busy? It's locked. Don't to worry. Everything's under control. Back, 73, back! Are you the butcher? Butcher? Me? Dr. Frankenstein was a butcher. I am a scientist. I uh, came to get our Thanksgiving turkey, but they're closed. Money. Uh, you, you have money. Um, press the bell next to Professor Matsuki. <laughs> But hurry there, they're going fast. <laughs> back, 73, back! You will not get 
be evicted. My brother owns this building. I am a scientist. If your people don't stop bothering me, I shall let the rooster loose again. But you told me to come in. Oh, shoe boy. Uh, come in. Uh, what are you waiting for? Sorry. The only people who come in here are the neighbors. Who complain about my chickens. They don't want me to keep them. You keep chickens in your apartment? No special chickens. I prefer to keep them under lock and key. <laughs> I came to get a, uh, a, a turkey. Oh! Uh, you have a large family. No, sir. But you have lots of friends. No, sir. Uh, how much money did you say you had? Twenty dollars. Just enough. <laughs> Here she is! <laughs> the greatest poultry bargain on earth. One medium-sized super chicken, eight cents a pound. This is number 73. Your 266 pound super chicken. I was told to get a, 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 a turkey. When I'm offering you a super chicken, just look at this wonderful example. Good for roasting, frying, barbecuing. My father wants a turkey. <laughs> Hello. Have it your own way. I can always sell it to the Kiwanis picnic or the Coast Guard. Yes. <laughs> You'll make quite a good eating. Well, I don't know. A deal? <laughs> I'll throw in the collar and leash as well. Uh, no refunds. Hey, wait a minute. Don't you have anything any uh, smarter than this? No refunds. And uh, shut the downstairs door, won't you? There's a good boy. I hope Papa likes bargains. Over here. <laughs> Aww. I guess the guys went home. It's okay. Come on. Come on up! Okay, go like this. Jump. Yeah, like this. Now jump. Jump. Jump up. Jump. Okay, good chicken. You better wait here, okay? You just stay right here. Don't move. What took you so long? I was starting to get worried. Are you in a good mood or in a bad mood? Arthur, did you lose the $20? No. Oh, good. Not exactly. Exactly what did you do? I got a chicken. You what? You are in a bad mood. Well, where, where is it? I left it out in the hall. It only cost me eight cents a pound. Oh, that's very cheap. Are you sure there's nothing wrong with it? I mean, maybe it's not fresh. It's fresh, all right. There's a... There's a 200-pound chicken out there! 266 pounds. 266 pounds of live chicken. And it's wearing a dog collar. <laughs> It's still there. Arthur. But Mama, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I got it from this old scientist and he was saying that it was a real bargain and I didn't know what to do. I thought we'd call her Henrietta. Arthur, we're not calling it anything. That $20 was for a turkey to eat, not a 266-pound chicken to keep as a pet. But, Mama, we can't take her back. The old man said that he was going to feed her to the Coast Guard or to some people on a picnic. Oh. Mama, please. It does seem friendly in a dumb sort of way. 
I'd walk her and I'd feed her and I'd take care of her and I could even train her how to cook if any burglars ever came. Well, please, Mama, she's a very good chicken and I'd do everything, I promise. Who's gonna tell your father? You could do that. Carly, it's such an unusual pet. Well, psychiatrists say that it's good for children when the family has pets. Dr. Freud, you try to raise a family on my salary. Carl, there'll be plenty of time to get the turkey. And besides, you know, what, what they're charging for pets today, the, the chicken is a bargain. I mean, and everybody loves bargains. It's the American way. The American way is a turkey in a table at Thanksgiving, not the 200-pound chicken on a leash. Papa, I'll take her back if that's what you want. Here you go, Henrietta. No feeding pets from the table? Arthur couldn't wait to show his new friend to Hoboken. We, well, we could have waited. happens on the first time. Come on. Come on. Let's go over the slide. Wait a minute. Let me take this stupid thing off. OK. Now, this is the slide, OK? Now watch. You got to go like this. See? Just like this. OK, now you. Now it's your your turn. Go, go ahead, Hen Henrietta. It's okay. That's a good chicken, yes. Okay, now come on, go up, go up, come on. Come on, get up there, come on. You can do it, come on, Henrietta. Get up, get up. No, no, see, we have to go all the way to the top, okay? Now, follow me, come on. to tell you to land on your feet. Bozo, no! Wait, Bozo, no! Yeah! Yeah! Bozo, get out of here, scat! 
Henrietta? 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 Hey, mister. Have you seen my pet chicken? She just ran away. She's this big. This big. Send back, send back. Somebody reported a polar bear on the building. Mister, it's not a polar bear. It's a big oh, chicken, good. and she belongs to me. Oh, yeah. All right, kid. All right, we have a cold red. Let's move with that. Come on, over here. Move aside. Move aside. Here we go. Come on. Mister. Now stand back, kid. That polar bear may be dangerous, okay? It's a chicken, not a polar bear. Hey, Chief. You know that polar bear that's been causing all the trouble? There's a kid here who says it isn't a polar bear. It's a chicken. It uh, clucks, Chief. Yeah. Okay, come on, let's make some room here. Come on, move back, move back. Come on, here we go. Come on, stop pushing me. Oh, I'll get her. I will. I will get her. You can, can come down now. Come on. It's all right, come on. Now, come down this ladder. It's just like the slide in the park. Come on. Okay, well, if you don't want to come on down, then you, you can stay up there all by yourself. I'm leaving. All right, everybody, I guess the chicken isn't going to come on down here. Wait a minute, the bird's on the move. The bird's coming down the ladder, Chief. Good job, kid. Good job. The next morning, we all woke up to find Arthur Bobowitz, a local hero to everyone, except his father. Papa? Arthur, the chicken has been nothing but trouble. But Papa, it wasn't her fault that the dog scared her or that she got stuck up on the building. And whose fault was it that she broke your bed or the banister? The banister was loose, Carl. And I told her to jump up on my bed. And the refrigerator. Arthur, when I come home from work tonight, I want that chicken gone and my money back. Do you hear me? I hear you, Papa. <laughs> Oh, it's you again. <laughs> I did tell you no refunds, didn't I? Yes, but my dad said that I can't keep Henrietta and that I have to give her back. And I'm not allowed to come home till I do. So you didn't want to eat her, eh? Huh? Well, I couldn't quite understand that. Number 73 is a very pleasant bird. <laughs> well, are you going to take her back or not? Ooh, come, 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 come. There's, there's no need to cry. Maybe we can find another pet to take her place. 
I don't want another pet. I just want them to let me keep Henrietta. That's all. Well, come in and have a look around anyway. Maybe you'll see something you like. <laughs> Be quiet, all of you! Especially you in there. Uh, this might interest you. Square fish? <laughs> Took me years to perfect. The only trouble is the, the corners keep on wearing off after a couple of months. Why do you want to square? My solution to the shipping problem. Just think. If sardines, tuna fish, and herring were rectangular, you could freeze them and put them straight into a box car. No waste of space. Do you, do you want it? No. I guess that you can love a 266 pound chicken, but I don't know how you can love a square fish. Oh. Hard to please, huh? Do huh? you want a red, white, and blue lizard? No. If if I can't have Henrietta, I don't want to think. I said no refunds. But the money was for a turkey. Oh, very well. What's your father's name? Carl Favowitz. Goodbye, Henrietta. Goodbye, Professor. Bye. Bye. Are you all right, Mrs. Buxton? It was tearing right through the Venetian blinds. A monster. A gorilla. All white with great red eyes. A gorilla as big as a horse. Could it have been Arthur's chicken? Nah, he took the chicken back this morning. Didn't you, son? Yes, sir. Well, it was right on the fire escape. All white with big red eyes. And it was heading straight for this apartment. You was a burglar in a white overcoat. Overcoat? Oh, that's silly. Oh, you're just so stupid. Why don't you just be quiet? You're never any help. You never have been. You're just stupid. <laughs> Are you all going away? Oh, <laughs> just for a little while, my boy. Uh, all of a sudden, I, I thought I should visit my sister in Pennsylvania. But did Henrietta run away? Who told you that? Did someone tell you that number 73 was loose? I'm uh, worried about her. You're worried? You're worried? I'm worried. Do you know what happens to people when one of my experiments gets loose? They go crazy. Once, they burnt my house down. A perfectly good old castle, and they burnt it right down to the ground. I bet that you don't even care about her. Of course I care. But once you've been a, a scientist as long as I have, you learn that some things are more important than others. Right now, the most important thing for me is to leave town with all my experience. But who is going to take uh, care of her? My sister's address in Pennsylvania. For your eyes only. To be used only in an emergency. But wait! Wait! Stop! Why are you leaving? <laughs> Poor Arthur. He was now alone and responsible for Henrietta. And poor Henrietta. She was frightened and running.
trumping the news again today is the giant chicken scare, which has reached epidemic proportions. An ugly situation, which nearly turned into a riot, erupted this morning outside a poultry market. And many supermarkets report a drop in business as they are closing early. When you weigh 266 pounds, you get pretty hungry. But Henrietta discovered the solution for her problem. She had a passion for potatoes. Henrietta's preference for potatoes was beginning to get out of hand. Fortunately, the people of our fair city are all cool, calm, and equipped to handle any emergency. Look, Chief, it's only a big chicken. Why can't you catch it? Well, if it's not the responsibility of the police department or the fire department, whose responsibility is it? Well, then tell the dog catcher to get on it. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, tell the Department of Animal Regulations to get on it. Oh, oh no. be calm, get away on vacation. There's a citizens committee out there, Harry. They want to know what the mayor is going to do about the chicken panic. Committee? It sounds like a mob. How many on that committee? 30. Oh, they got a rope and a tree? They're not going away, Harry. And neither is this furor. This is made to order for the Crandall campaign. And our slogan, safety in the streets, there is none. If you don't move on this thing fast, the chicken is gonna have a better chance of getting elected than you will. You're the smart one, Gibbons. Think of something. Fresh, fried, or frozen, no potatoes were safe from Henrietta. Everyone wondered where she would strike next. Hoboken set out to defend itself. <laughs> chicken is stalking the streets. Uh, the giant chicken was observed leaving the Clam Brothers Seafood Restaurant at 4.30 in the morning, having left the kitchen in a shambles and having uh, eaten 46 pounds of frozen French fried potatoes. Later, it left a trail of overturned garbage cans and uh, beat up a number of neighborhood dogs. Yeah, what has happened to her, Mama? That corner. sure doesn't sound like Henrietta. I don't know, dear. Uh, Maybe being hunted like that is making her uh, mean. There is one note of hope, however. Uh, the uh, mayor has called a special meeting of the city council. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. 
We have a problem. Only one. I've made peace with the truckers, Mr. Crandall. You mean capitulated. Call it what you like. The Thanksgiving turkey problem has been solved. But the big chicken is still with us. Oh, <laughs> Gibbons? Lady and gentlemen, as you may recall, in 1977, the town of Gatorade, Florida, was terrorized by a renegade rooster known as Everglade Ike. This rooster was so destructive that over half the population of Gatorade fled their homes. And in 1982, an enraged hen took over a movie theater in Swineford, New York, consumed 50 bushels of popcorn, slashed the seat cushions, and ran the movie Spartacus, starring Kirk Douglas, over 100 times before she was captured. In each of these cases, the renegade chicken was ultimately captured by Anthony De Palma of Henfanger, Florida. And I have taken the liberty of wiring Mr. De Palma, asking him to come here at once. Lady and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony De Palma of Henfanger, Florida, will arrive in Hoboken the day after tomorrow. Oh, that's very good. Oh, wonderful. Wait, wait, stop! What's going on, this kid? Have you, have you seen her? Seen who? What are you talking about? My chicken, the one stuck up on the roof. Hey, I'm sorry, son, but we got a report of a wild gorilla on the loose. Why don't you be a good boy and go home, huh? That gorilla is probably my chicken and she needs taken care of. Well, whatever it is, if we spot it, we'll take care of it once and for all. Now go ahead home. town's outside, Mr. Mayor. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, when you step through that door and greet De Palma, it's going to be bye-bye chicken, hello, second term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me. Mayor's office? Fine, I'll tell it. De Palma left five minutes ago. That means he should be out in the courtyard just about now. <clears throat> Coming That's through, very please. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, where's the mayor? I'm the mayor. But you can't be. Anthony De Palma, chicken catcher. Of course you are. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce the highly regarded, world renowned. Let's Crim talk money. Uh, oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, but, but first, wouldn't you like to step outside and meet my constituents? I don't meet anybody until I meet the money. Oh, yes, of course. Mayor, go ahead. Why don't you take a seat? Go ahead, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. The rest of you guys, go ahead. Sit down, too. Well, come on. I don't got all day. Take a seat. My price is $60,000. $60,000? Well, you could take it or you could leave it. Well, that's an awful lot of money. It didn't cost me that much to get elected. Well, then I suggest you live with your chicken. Uh, no, 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 no. He didn't say we wouldn't pay. We'll pay, won't we? Well, of course, we'll pay. You'll pay? Uh, yeah, we'll pay. All right. Now, catching a chicken is a very tricky business. 
It's got to be done in steps. Step number one. Here you go. The chicken has got to have a name. I don't understand what a chicken's name has to do with catching it. Well, then I'll explain it to you. You see, it makes a better story for the newspapers. You people all read about Everglade Ike, didn't you? Yes, yes. You see, it makes catching a chicken seem like more of a challenge. It's like Moby Dick. We're not talking about some bum of a whale. You know why that guy called him Moby Dick? Because it was scarier, more ominous. We'll hold a contest. We'll call her Dirty Louise. We have a winner. Dirty Louise, I'd hate to run into her in a dark alley. Uh -huh. <laughs> Step number two, the trap. Now I set a trap that no chicken can resist. Now once the trap is set, nobody can go near it. You see, wild chicken, you might find this interesting. Wild chickens by nature are very suspicious animals. If they see or they smell people, they're gonna scoop. So I set the trap, nobody goes near it for 48 hours. And then you come and you pick up your chicken. Excuse me, Mr. De Palma, but uh, how do we know that this trap of yours is going to work? <laughs> Bye. No, 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 no. No, wait, stop him. Wait, wait, stop him. No, no, please. He, he didn't mean anything by it. He will never ask another question. Will you know, I think I've been insulted. I really should go. Oh, allow me, please. I don't think I want this job. Yeah, oh, here, please. 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 <laughs> Outside is parked a semi official limousine. It is platinum-plated chrome work. It's computerized. It's silver blue. It's mine. But it soon will be his. Right. I've never even ridden in it. I never got to use the siren. It's his. You know, you people seem like such a sincere group of people. I suppose I could uh, give you a few days and catch Dirty Louise for you. Oh. <laughs>
Henrietta was getting more and more desperate, and so was Arthur. Ever since he wrote the letter, he'd been to the bus station every day, hoping Professor Matsoki would arrive. Uh, mister? No, sorry. Is your name Arthur Bobowitz? Yes, sir. I am Dr. Su Ting Hang. I hope you're not too late, Professor. Shh. If anybody finds out that I'm in town, they'll wring my neck, not the chickens. Okay, I promise I will not tell anybody, Professor. You will if you keep on calling me Professor. I'm sorry. What's the latest? I can't be away from my animals for more than a few days. Okay, the mirror said on TV what he's gonna do is this. The reign of terror is over. Voters all over the city can once again rejoice in knowing that their mayor has again ridden to their rescue. Oh, lady and gentlemen, please. Caution, caution. Dirty Louise may be alive and dangerous. Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, listen to this. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> I don't know how he gets it. It's sure good though, huh? I thank you, and my party thanks you. Uh, gentlemen, uh, lady. Oh no, no! Support at this time. Not quite what I had in mind. You wait here. Mr. Mayor, there's an oriental chicken expert here to see you. Another expert? I've had it with experts after the last one I hired. Excusing me, pretty orchid. Orchid? <laughs> you have hired less than the best, your worship. I am acquainted with Mr. De Palma. He was my pupil some years ago. A young man not without talent, but uh, uh, slapdash and huckle-muckle in his workmanship. What? He was a jerk. Mr. Crandall, you can't go in there. The mayor is with a very important chicken expert. Would you leave me alone? I have something for you, Mr. Mayor. And just how much is this expert costing the taxpayers? It will not be necessary to pay me a penny. I am prepared to locate Dirty Louise, whose real name is Henrietta, also known as 73, as an exercise in philanthropy. And as an exercise in philanthropy, I'm about to save you the expense of running for office again. This is a petition calling for your impeachment from office, for dereliction of duty, squandering the taxpayers' money, and general incompetence in handling the Hoboken chicken emergency. Well, while I'm still the mayor of Hoboken, I'll decide. Now, what makes you think that you can do a better job than De Palma? Oh, sir, <clears throat> chickens are very sensitive birds. <clears throat> And when they don't feel wanted, they become unpleasant, antisocial. A perfectly sweet chicken can become violent and destructive if he doesn't feel wanted. Well, do you think that Dirty Louise... Uh, please, <laughs> refer to her as uh, Henrietta. It'll make you uh, think of her more as a person. Uh, uh, a misunderstood chicken and uh, a person. <laughs> this man may be more of a charlatan than the last one. Now, wait a minute. What you're trying to tell me is that that's why Henrietta was out there on the streets knocking over fire hydrants and scaring my voters half to death? I am sure of it. You see, for a short time, Henrietta belonged to Arthur Bobowitz, and they became great friends until his father asked him to take her back. And back? Back where? Where did this bird... Uh, Henrietta. <laughs> yes, where did Henrietta come from in the first place? I have not been able to find that out. And if you want me to help you, you must promise not to ask into that side of things. Please, continue.
The police started chasing her. She felt hungry, unloved. If she felt the same, wouldn't you be angry too? Yes, yes, that makes perfect sense. But how can we help stop Henrietta from, from prowling at night? I was coming to that. <clears throat> Uh, we will start uh, a publicity campaign. We will ask the uh, good citizens of Hoboken to be friendly to chickens. We will ask them to wave and smile when they see Henrietta, instead of shouting and screaming and, and, and calling the police and, and throwing things at her. <laughs> then maybe Henrietta will start to look for Arthur again. Oh, yes. I like it. I like it. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous, Crandall? Since when does love and understanding not work, Crandall? If you're counting on love and understanding, you can count on being the ex-mayor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So ahead. It will work, won't it? It's worth a try. <laughs> Benevolent mayor reunites little boy with his pet chicken. <laughs> what are you doing with that? Here, you're getting this. Hi, Henrietta. Hi. Hi, oh, chicken. chicken. Hi, oh, it's chicken. okay. It's potato. They said it likes potatoes. Hi, Hi Henrietta. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. It's okay. Here you go. Chicken. For you. Hi. There you go. Atta. Good. Fresh. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi, chicken. Bye-bye. emergency, the Be Kind to Henrietta campaign seems to be paying off in more ways than one. It has begun to bring the town of Hoboken together. People are starting to be nice to each other. And isn't that something to uh, cheer about? So we must just hope that Henrietta will respond as well as the people are themselves. I swear, I don't know what's got into you. I don't, I don't, you just drive me crazy. Why do you always keep buying all this stuff? Well, but, oh, come on. Well, don't you want to know why? No. Huh? 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 <laughs> Would you like some potato chips? Here, hold this. All of it. <laughs> yeah. Nice, crunchy potato chips. Good. Doesn't work, does it? Here, I'll help you. Just be calm. Here you go. Nice chicken. See what a little kindness can do. So get back. Nice chicken. You're sweet. Why doesn't she, she come home, Mama? It's almost Thanksgiving. Sometimes it takes a little while to feel love and kindness. Good night, honey. Good night, Mama. Come home, Henrietta. Come home.
Patricia and I are both very happy to be here today. This is a Thanksgiving to be remembered, a Thanksgiving that the citizens of Hoboken have much to be thankful for. Because of a young boy and his chicken, they have learned that love and kindness to each other, be it chicken or human, is a very precious gift. Probably the most precious gift of all, togetherness. Togetherness. <laughs> It is a great honor for me to present to Arthur Barberwitz of this city the first official City of Hoboken chicken license for his pet chicken, Henrietta. <laughs> if it's all right with his father. I do believe your father has something to say about that. <clears throat> That's right. I do. Uh, Arthur, I would like you to keep Henrietta here as your very own pet. Papa, if you don't really want me to, I... No, no, it's all right, son. She's all bought and paid for. As I was saying to your mother just this morning, I think every boy should have his own chicken. Oh, boy, thank you, Papa. This will be the best Thanksgiving ever. For all of us, son. <laughs> but not for Mr. Crandall and his petition. Gibbons! Fireless. Pleasure. I hope your Thanksgiving is as happy as Arthur's and Henrietta's. As for Hoboken, life got back to normal. At least for a while.